And it is the boozy cousin of the Academy Awards today. Hollywood welcomed the return of the Golden Globes Awards ceremony after being canceled in 2022 after a racism scandal in the Hollywood foreign press. Now, they've had a year off to reflect on their sins, and today the red carpet was rolled out. Hollywood's best and brightest rocked up with the exception of, few, of a few notable absences, and Hollywood got on with the show. Johnny Olazinski from the New York Post joins me here on set, the brilliant entertainment critic for the New York Post. Thank you so much for joining us, coming all the way from New York just to be with us here in Sydney. Let's start with the all-important host. This year, a lesser-known figure, comedian Jared Carmichael, kicked off proceedings, wasting no time in taking a whack at the organizers. Have a look. And I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here because I'm black. <laughs> like, one minute, you're making mint tea at home. <laughs> the next, you're invited to be the black face of an embattled white organization. <laughs> Johnny, the laughs didn't seem to be that genuine there. What did you make of the host? Well, uh, if all goes well, he'll remain little known. Um, <laughs> I, d do you see that clip? He was acting like uh, he was a sleep app, just sort of calmly talking as though he was giving a fireside chat rather than being an entertainer leading uh, one of the biggest nights in Hollywood. What he did is he began it on a somber funereal note and it stuck for the entire three and a half hour slog. And now let's go down to the, uh, the important stuff, the winners. Were there any big snubs or any big surprises out of this or were, was even... The winners and losers just exactly the same sort of snooze fest. Uh, there was one big surprise to me, which was that the Banshees of Inisherin, Martin McDonough's movie, beat everything, everywhere, all at once. But this is easily explained. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association that votes for this is about 80 drunk Italian men. And <laughs> they just happen to love Martin McDonough and his sort of dark European take on the world. So that went big. Right, okay, we get a lot of mail from the Italian-Australian community here. Thank you so much for that. Now, Australians Hugh Jackman, Margot Robbie, Elizabeth Debicki, Baz Luhrmann all lost their nominations, but there was a huge win for Kate Blanchett and Elvis, which was filmed in Queensland. Tell us about that. So Kate Blanchett is probably gonna go all the way to the Oscars as well. She's so good in tar as a kind of canceled uh, symphony orchestra director, and everyone's just giving her so much acclaim and lauding her. Uh, so she's going to probably win the Oscar as well. Uh, and then Elvis, which, like, God bless Baz Luhrmann for getting the film industry back on its feet during COVID and filming that here. Austin Butler won, and he could take the Oscar too. So now I've heard about the Kate Blanchett movie, Tar. I cannot wait to see it. But what is the Elvis film? What has Baz Luhrmann um, unleashed on us here? So what Baz is so good at is taking a familiar personality and making him into a modern day rock star. You know, you and I probably think of Elvis as the sort of Vegas uh-huh-huh guy in the white jumpsuit. He reminds us how important and sexy and powerful he was in his time. It's just such an exciting film. And were you surprised that Kate Blanchett with Tar, given that a lot of people say that has a real strong anti-cancel culture, anti-PC message, that that's become such a big hit in Hollywood? Uh, well, it's become a big hit in Hollywood's award circuit. It's made ac absolutely no money anywhere, probably because of that, how many people actually want to watch a movie about cancel culture. But I implore people to, just to see how good Kate Blanchett is. And I want to see it because I think it's time we had a good classical music movie. We haven't had one for, I don't know, decades, if ever. So that's really good. Um, also, the racism furor that engulfed the, the show, the awards, last year, did that carry through this year? What, what have they done to kind of try and diffuse all of that? Well, it carried through in a big way. Like we saw Gerard Car uh, Carmichael, the host, uh, he began by talking about it for roughly 10 minutes, which is a great, ten way, minutes. great way to diffuse the, uh, the tension and make us all you know, feel good and boozy as the Golden Globes is supposed to be. You could tell no one really thanked the Hollywood Foreign Press. Uh, it just felt like Hollywood's night of incendiary excitement was... Uh, very monk-like. So is this sort of the future for Hollywood, that it's all going to have to be very sort of buttoned up, PC, dreary, and God help us all sober? Absolutely. Mm. I, and which is, which is well, awesome. That's no fun. Well, remember when Joan Rivers used to insult people's appearances to their face? Yes. That's done. Done, done. Finally, it's not a Hollywood sh show, award show, without a bit of politics. Now, I hadn't realized this until I came in. Ukrainian President Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, appeared virtually. What happened? there? Well, he was uh, introduced by one of my favorite people, Sean Penn, 
uh, and, and he came on. Uh, Zelensky sort of compared uh, the efforts of Ukraine to the movies. I don't know if I feel great about that, but this is his second award show appearance after the Grammys, and I think maybe he should give it a rest on that front. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems a little odd there. Um, you know, he's got all this, this huge, horrible war happening in your country, but you're out, uh, you're out there sort of glad-handing with Hollywood, hey? Right, and, and saying hi to, to Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all fascinating. It sounds... Um, Really, like, I'm very glad I actually missed this, that you did the hard work for all of us out there that didn't have to watch it. We know actually what happened. I can't wait to get the sleep app that's going to come out of this because, you know, I'm a huge insomniac out there. And, uh, and uh, so I'll put this on my phone, <laughs> listen to that 10 minutes of, of anti-racism from the Golden Globes, and I will be off to sleep for nine hours. But anyway, Johnny, it's been an absolute delight to have you here in the studio.